Hi there, I'm Debbie Shaw and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this Christmas gift bag um, which is from my book Half Yard Christmas, although this one's been adapted a little bit. So I'll show you the book and I'll show you the project and then I'll show you how we've made it a little bit different. So this is Half Yard Christmas. Um, Half Yard is a range of books um, that I've written where all of the projects are using half a yard of fabric or less. So a lot of these are very small pieces of fabric. And this book has actually been chaptered. So we have oh, all of your hints and tips and tools and equipment that you're going to need um, for the book to start with, always there at the beginning of the books. But if I just scroll through quickly, or oh, this free motion embroidery, uh, making a bag base square, we're going to do that with the bag um, that I'll show you in just a second, actually. And it's from the Rustic Christmas. So this is the bag that I'm going to make, but I'm making it in different fabric. Um, so Rustic, I was thinking, lots of hessian, lots of burlap, lots of string, and a, a splash of red there as well. So we've got advent calendars, a bit of bunting. They're all ever so simple projects. And I try and put as many pictures in here as I possibly can so that beginner sewers particularly can follow everything that I'm doing. So with the bag that I'm making here, instead of hessian, I've used fabric. So no raw edges, I'll show you that in just a second. And the base on this one isn't square, but I decided to make the square base on this one, so that's why it's a little bit different. But you can personalise these, you can make these as different as you want to. After all, a book is inspiration for you, not set in stone. So this is a Scandinavian Christmas. Change the fabric and it doesn't look Scandinavian, so you, know, you don't have to follow exactly what I put here. Um, so that's Scandinavian. It's a big book, this one. Moving on to a traditional Christmas, so everything's kind of red and greens. We've got baubles. Another gift bag that's a completely different style of gift bag. And a wreath cushion cover. Then the next one is the monochrome. So looking all very modern in black and white fabrics. And... The kids' Christmas. Kids' Christmas is quite nice because there's a lot of working with felt and it's the kind of thing that kids can do themselves and so not just for the kids, um, but for the kids to make. And then we have a contemporary Christmas. So just modern, fresh designs. But again, it's the, the rustic bag that I'm going to make. Can't see it there or a take on the rustic bag that I'm going to make in cotton fabric this time. So I'm just going to give you a list of the materials and what you need to cut. And then I think we'll get sewing. So I've cut out my pattern pieces and for the outside of the bag, and these can be made in any size that you like, I've got two pieces of fabric that are cut to 12 inches wide and 16 inches long. And the lining's a little bit longer, so this is 12 inches wide, but 18 inches long, and again, we've got two pieces of that. Now, with the outer fabric, I've put some fusible fleece on the wrong side. Um, in the book, I use hessian or burlap, so it's quite a thick, heavy fabric and it doesn't really need anything behind it to stabilise it. But this just being a cotton, I thought it might be make like a little bit more substantial if it has some kind of interfacing behind it. Um, so the one that I've chosen is called uh, Valiseline H640 and it gives a nice um, finish to the bag. It makes it plump, it'll makes it, make it sit up on its own and um, it uh, makes it a little bit more expensive looking and luxurious. Now I've also cut a couple of strips of the fleece that are three quarters of an inch wide by the 12 inch width. I'll show you where that goes shortly. Um, in the book, the bag has a piece of ribbon going around here that forms a channel for the string to go through. But this bag, as it's going to be slightly different, I've used a strip of the lining fabric. So I've cut this to one and a half inches wide and then fold it over one end, fold it over the long sides by a quarter of an inch each, and this is going to go around the top of the bag to make that channel, this time to have a piece of ribbon going through it. These are the four squares that I've chosen for my parcel on the front. Now again, in the book, it's quite a rustic style. 
So I'll just show you how that parcel was finished off because I didn't actually hem around the edge. Um, where are you? There we go. So in this instance, um, I adhered the four squares to the hessian. Um, the tape or the ribbon in the center here covers over the raw edges in the center, but around the edge, all I did was a very short stitch to sew around there, which means that the fabric's going to fray slightly, and I think that for a, a rustic look works really well. In fact, I would encourage it to fray by giving it a little bit of a scrub with a scrubbing brush. Um, but on this, I want it to be a little bit neater, so I'm not going to have that frayed edge look. But it just does to show how you can take ideas and inspiration from a project in a book or a magazine and then adapt it, change it. If you want to follow this step by step and make the initial bag, that's absolutely fine. But then you think, no, actually I don't want to make this out of Hessian. Would it work in a lighter weight of cotton or a quilting cotton? Would it work in poplin? Um, would it work in, I don't know, some patchwork fabric that I've already got at home that I've, I've made myself? Well, the answer is yes, it would. You can make this in any style that you like. So the one that I'm making here is going to be far from rustic. So I don't want those frayed edges. So this time, I'm going to sew the four squares together. So I've actually got a seam around here, then I'm going to press over the edge, and then we'll put this in the center of the front of the bag as if it was a piece of applique. So that's where we'll start. So let's lay out the four pieces as I want them to be. So I'll sew those two together, and then these two together. And I'm just using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So there's the first one, and there's my second one, and I'm just going to press the seam open on these so it cuts down on the bulk that goes underneath the ribbon. So you could just finger press this, you don't need to take the iron out, but this one's quite tiny and handy. So that's that. And where have you gone? The same with this one. I think it would make a, a really nice display actually of having your presents all in different sizes if you're going to make these for gifts under your own tree. Um, but it's quite nice as well if you're making a gift as the gift wrap or part of the gift. And it just means that next year you're going to see this gift bag again because you're not going to throw things away like this. So I'm just matching up the centre seam here. That doesn't have to be exactly spot on because this is going to be covered over, covered over by ribbon anyhow. So let's just sew across here. And then I'll press that centre open again. If you prefer to press to one side, it really doesn't matter. We're not creating a, a beautiful patchwork quilt or anything. Squish that open. I think that's one of the nice things about making bags like this, particularly if you are a beginner. It doesn't have to be perfect. And if you have a bit of a, a wobbly line or you haven't cut something quite straight, it's personality. It makes it obvious that this is actually handmade. So I'm just going to roll the very edge over by about a quarter of an inch and press and I'll do that all the way around. That should be quite nice if it was a little bit of a wonky present anyhow, wouldn't it? Remember if you're making a smaller bag, you may need to cut smaller squares for this um, for the applique. And I've only put this on one side of the bag. You could put another one on the back if you wish. And just press that over. Watch your fingers. It's a very small hem. And there's the final side.
Okay. And then this is going to go onto the front of my bag. So do bear in mind, we'd like this to be sitting in the centre and I'm going to have the channel for my ribbon two inches from the top. So just make sure that this is kind of central. We don't want it like this and we don't want it too close to the top and we don't want it too close to the bottom. So obviously the measurements are going to be in the book. Well, so what I'm going to do here is to just use a little spray. I'll just point this away from my sewing machine. A 505 spray, which is a repositionable spray adhesive or a basting spray, sometimes known just to hold that in place before I sew. So that's going there, that's going there. Do you know, I think we're going to square the base of this one as well. So I'm going to sit that a little bit higher. And then I'm just going to sew straight around the edge. In fact, we'll have the ribbon on first, I think. And I'll show you why, so that I can tuck the ends of the ribbon underneath the, underneath the parcel. So I'll just put that so that it's straight. We'll have one piece here, and again I'm cutting this longer than the parcel itself, so I can pop it underneath. Now if you don't want to spray, then a fabric glue pen or a glue stick is ideal. So I'm just going to pop a little glue here. It makes it a lot easier when you're using glues and adhesives like this than pinning. So that's going to go in place here. And again, I'll wrap that around the end. So I'll get a nice neat edge. And then my second piece across here. Again, I'll cut that about half an inch longer at, at each end. And glue, if you happen to get glues like this, they come in all different colours, if you happen to get it onto your fabric, they do wash out. So never use um, a glue that's meant for paper on fabric, because you might find that it stains and it'll certainly gunk up your sewing machine needle. And that can go around there. Now I'm going to sew all the way around the edge. So I'm going to start and stop underneath the top of the ribbon because that's going to be the most inconspicuous area because there will be a bow on top of there. Just lengthen my stitches slightly. And a nice neat stitch. Now when you stop in the corner, stop with your needle in the down position so you can pivot this around and, and carry on sewing. Now I'm using a white thread, which means that it really stands out against my fabric. So I just want to make sure that this line is kept really nice and neat and straight. And I've got some tips for you if you're not very good at sewing in a straight line. Um, if you have um, a blind hem foot on your sewing machine, or an over edge foot for your sewing machine, then it'll have a guide on it. And you can actually use that guide to bump it up against the edge of your fabric and feed the fabric up against the guide and that'll help you get a nice even straight line all the way around. It's particularly good if you're sewing on curves. Um, even the most experienced sewer can have problems with a top stitch on a curve. But that's a great way of using a foot that you may not have thought of um, for a purpose that it wasn't really intended. Right, so that's that. One more thing I am going to do here, I'm not going to sew all the way across the ribbon, but this is going to be quite loose when the, when the glue disappears. So I'm just going to sew a little box here right in the centre and that's going to help that to stay in place. You could sew along the whole of the ribbon if you wanted to, but I think this is just a nice way 
of securing the ribbon without doing that. That'll hold it in place. So let's just snip away the loose end here. So the final thing to do with my parcel is to pop a bow on the front or on the top here. Now I've got a ribbon that's printed on one side and not the other. So if you're going to sew a, make a bow in the regular way, you will find that half of the ribbon that's showing through the loop is on the right side and half of it is on the inside. So the easiest way to make a nice neat bow with the print the same on both is to make one loop, two loops and then tie those together in a knot. And you'll find that you have all of your fabrics all facing in the same direction. So just let's wiggle this around until I have a nice size of bow. And then I'm going to snip this at an angle so that it's even. And that goes on the top here. Just make that a little bit tighter. Now I'm going to hand sew this in place. But to be honest, these gift bags are probably not going to go in the wash. So if you've got some strong fabric glue, you could just um, put a drop of glue behind that and glue it on. Or you could do both, glue it on first and then just put a few hand stitches just for extra security so that, you know, over the years, because this is going to be coming out year after year, you know that it's not going to um, come off. But you could really go to town on this. You could add a few, oh, if you've got embellishments like um, little charms, maybe you've got some snowflake charms, um, or little shiny th diamantes and things like that would look really nice. I want to bend the tails of the bow so they face down a little bit. So at the moment I want to do that and I want them to do that. And again, I'll just put a little stitch Just to hold that in place. Again, a drop of glue would, would work just as well if you prefer. So that'll hold that one there. So I'm doing this upside down, aren't I? And this one here. I think that's a nice arrangement of a bow. So I'll just tie this off at the back. And then we'll start to put the whole thing together. So take both the front and the back pieces. And we're going to sew these right sides together just across the top. Again, with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Don't worry too much about seam allowances, as long as it's um, consistent all the way around. If you're a little bit over, then that's fine. I wouldn't go any less than a quarter of an inch, because then you're not going to have a very strong seam. So that's one side. So we have that, and the same on the opposite side. Make sure if you've got a directional fabric, then you're using them both in the same direction. So if you're wondering why the lining of the bag is longer than the front, or the outside of the bag, then this is why, because when the lining goes inside, if I just match up the two ends of the bag, like so, on the outside, I've got a really nice border. 
but the lining fabric doesn't have the fleece on the back so that's a little bit thin compared to this which is why I cut those three quarters of an inch strips of fleece which are going to sit right at the top of the lining so the bag feels nice and padded all the way to the top. It's not the most important thing but it is a nice finishing touch. So that's going to tuck underneath there right up against the seam. Like so. I'm just going to iron very quickly from the back because you normally iron these things from the front. But just to hold that in place while I flip it over and then iron from this side. So you can use a relatively hot iron and steam if you want to with the Vilizeline fleeces. Let's snip off the end bits here. And we'll do the same with this side. So, whoops, that's my ribbon. So I'll just press that flat take my strip of fleece, make sure that the knobbly bits are facing the fabric, so that's the glue, push it under here. So again, these are little things that aren't in the book because it wasn't needed in the book. I didn't use any fleece with the book. But the hessian fabric I was working with was um, a lot heavier than this. So again, just a, a quick dot of heat, if you like, to hold that down. Then we'll flip it over and iron it from this side. And again, we'll snip off those little ends. you to one side for now. So it's looking good. It'd make a nice tote bag actually, wouldn't it? If you just had handles on the top instead of making the drawstring, that would make a nice Christmassy tote bag. Now I'm going to put the channel on last, not just on the outside fabric. And there's a reason for that. Um, it's because I want to sew this channel through the lining and through the outer layers so that they don't separate. So if you were wondering if I've forgotten that stage, I haven't. That's what was happening. So let's pop these two pieces right sides together. And I want to make sure that the side seams here meet or match. Because if they don't, that's really going to stand out. No one's going to notice if your seams are perfect, but everyone will notice if they're not. So let's match that up and that's the point I'm going to start sewing from. If you wanted to pin, then that's an option. I'm not going to with this because I just find it just as easy to line up the edges and sew. Same quarter of an inch seam allowance. You might find as you're sewing over fleece like this, or any kind of wadding actually, um, that your machine seems to be slowing down a bit, or that your stitches are too short. And the reason for that is purely because it's the friction against the presser foot and this, this wadding, it tends to slow it down. So you might want to lengthen your stitch. I'm on 2.8 when I'm sewing around here, but I'm still creating quite a small stitch because of the, the friction. Which is normal, that's fine. So again, stop with the needle down if you're going to stop and pivot around. And then sew back down here. I'm just making sure that those seams at the top are going to be lining up when I get there. Okay. 
So I'll find that when I do come to the lining fabric, my 2.8 stitch length is going to be a bit too long. So I'm going to shorten it down to 2.4 now. And then we'll sew around the rest of the bag. You can see that seems to have sewn, sewn a little bit quicker now, and it's not, it's purely because of the stitch length. Um, I need to leave a gap in the bottom as well. So I can turn it all the right side out. So just line up the raw edges together. So I'll leave a gap here. About four inches should do it. And then we're back on the home run. That's the other ribbon on the floor. back to the beginning. Now in the book the bag doesn't have a square base it, it's quite two-dimensional but I want to square the base on this one so I'll show you first on the lining. If you separate the two pieces and then squish them open like so so that the bottom seam here is sitting over the side seam and you can feel that, you can feel where they, they butt up against each other. And then I'm just going to make a small base on this one. So I'm going to sew from the point, not the point of the fabric, but the point of the fabric here. So just fold that over. I'm going to sew from there by about an inch and a half. And make a triangle this way. So if you wanted to measure and mark that, you can do. Put that on your cutting mat, measure an inch and a half from the end and sew straight across. I'm just going to do that by eye. If you want to put a pin in that seam, that may help. Or, I've actually got the, um, the markings on the throat plate of my sewing machine, you should have two, so I can line this point up with a one and a half inch mark and sew straight across. And I've squished the seams in opposite directions, so the base seam's going that way, the side seam's going that way. And when I've sewn it, I'm going to chop it off. So we'll do the same on this side. Now this time, squish it. Where I push the base seam to the left, I want to make sure it's going the same way on this side, just so that the seam doesn't twist. So the side seam can now go the opposite direction and feel the seams again and one and a half inches from the point down you sew straight across. And cut it off. Then the same on the outer bag, so you might find it easier to just put your hand inside. And squish that open. Side seams meeting, one and a half inches across here. chop it off and I'm cutting off about a quarter of an inch so that's still the seam allowance there and here's the last one Now we can turn the whole thing the right side out. So just grab onto the base there and pull it through. 
This is called bagging out, if you knew. So I'll just push my hand inside and push out those corners. And I'll show you that nice, neat little base as well. And then we're left with a hole in the lining, so that needs to be sewn over. So the easiest way to do that, you could do this by hand if you want it to be an invisible seam. If you put your fingers inside and pull to each side, the, court, the um, raw edges automatically want to fold in. So grab hold of those and just sew straight across. To be honest, I wouldn't hand sew that because it's in the bottom of quite a deep bag and I don't think anyone's going to look that closely. Now this goes inside. And again, because that lining is longer, I've got that really lovely board around the top, which I'm going to press. Get a good blast of steam here would be preferable. And that's looking really nice. See what I mean about a tote bag? Kind of wishing I'd have made a tote bag instead now. Um, let's put this channel around the top. So I'm going to start it just at the top in the same line as the ribbon is here and I've only folded over one end at the moment because this is too long and I just want to make sure it fits perfectly when I come round to this side. So measure a couple of inches from the top or wherever you think by eye that's going to look good. And this side of the ribbon is the line that I'm going to line this up against. And I'm going to pin this all the way around so it's the same distance from the top all the way. Got my fabric upside down. Who knew? I'll go the other way around. Doesn't really matter on fabric like this, I don't think anybody would have noticed. So we just keep pinning. You could use your glue stick again. I wouldn't use the basting spray because I wouldn't want glue to get onto the part where the, uh, the ribbon's going to thread through. There we go, almost there. make sure that they line up again when I get back to this side and then let's cut this off and this end is going to fold back to the other side of the ribbon so that that's a nice even distance like so and then I'm going to sew around the top and around the bottom through all the layers of fabric. And remember at the start and stop of each one of the rows of stitches just to do a little bit of a back tack because when you tie the ribbon through there, there is going to be some pressure on the seam and we don't want that coming undone. Now, if you have a, um, a free arm on your sewing machine, now's a good time to use it. I don't on this machine, so it can be a little bit of a struggle getting the fabric underneath. But it's fine, it'll work. So back tack a few stitches, make sure I'm not sewing through too many layers of fabric like the other half of the bag and then I'm sewing quite close to the edge of that channel. Always take your pins out when you're sewing. I know a lot of people don't 
Some people are quite happy to sew over pins. Um, I'm not. I get a little bit nervous, not necessarily about breaking a needle or breaking a pin, but about where, if I'm going to break a needle, where the end of it's going to fly off to. And I don't think it does your sewing machine any good, really, to hit obstacles as it's sewing. So you can just take it slowly. Now, I'll show you when I get to the end, but my, my channel fabric is crumpling up a little bit. It's moving. That's fine. But I may need to sew the ends over again, or fold the end over again before I get to the end. It doesn't make any sense at all. I'll, I, I'll show you what I mean in just a second. Pushing the other side of the bag out of the way. Right, if I get as far as this... Where I've sewn this around, it's kind of pushed the channel fabric, so it's a little bit too long now. And that's okay, it hasn't stretched it or anything, it's just moved it a bit. So I just need to fold this end over a little bit more. Just to make the opening there a little bit more balanced. So I'll pick up where I started off. Oops, I've got the rest of the bag under there. Free arms are so helpful if you have them. The only thing I really miss on this machine is the free arm. There you go. Right. And remember to backstitch a few stitches when you get to the end. So that's the top. Then I need to do exactly the same but sew around the bottom. So it won't move this time. I'm just making sure that all of that rest of the bag fabric is out of the way. I haven't used the unpicker so far, so I don't want to start now. And I think this is something, well, I think with all sewing, actually, take your time with it. Sewing shouldn't be a rush. The only time you want to rush something sewing is if you see one of your... Members of your family walking out of the door with a split in their trousers. Oh, let's get that sewn up now and quickly. But when you're creatively sewing, it's nice to take your time. I think that's the same with any hobby, isn't it? It's not a rush. It should be a pleasure to do this. Oh, there you go. Almost there. There we go. I'm going to give that one final press. What is quite handy if you're going to make a lot of um, bags like this is a tailor's ham or a sleeve board to go on your ironing board because that means that you can get right inside these seams and press them flat without squishing the bag. In fact, in my sewing room accessories book, I made um, a tailor's ham specifically for handbags. So it's got a, a square base on it, so when you push it into the bottom of a bag, it's already that square shape. Just press my press my present and then we'll have the ribbon through I'll just trim off those ends so you could use the same ribbon 
Mine's a little bit narrower, or if you can find some nice jazzy Christmas ribbon would be good. So I want that to go all the way around and then a little bit longer. And then we'll pop one end on a safety pin. When I'm putting ribbon through channels like this, I like to fold the end of it over, just so that the, the stress of the safety pin isn't actually going to tear the ribbon itself. And then we'll thread it through. A bodkin would work just as well. I just happen to have a, a safety pin to hand. So just keep going. I think it's looking really good. And you can get some beautiful Christmassy fabrics nowadays. So you can maybe have something sparkly or um, something a cartoon character maybe for the, for the kids if you're making these for children. There's lots of um, character type of licensed fabrics out there. And of course it doesn't have to be for Christmas. It could be a wedding gift, it could be a birthday gift, anniversaries, just a gift. Just a, a no particular occasion kind of gift. They're the best ones aren't they? Right, so that's my bag finished. Let's just tie this top. So draw it up. Whoops. Another nice big bow. And that is my gift bag finished. So I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. I hope you go away and make lots and lots of gift bags and enjoy every second you're making them. And when you have, do post some pictures. I can't wait to see what you're making with them. I'll see you soon.